Well, hello, um, I'm Simon Dennington, and I'm going to talk about challenges we met in trying to develop a particular type of antimicrobial polymer. And this was another NABREC pump drying project. I just wonder if we could put the last one on. So um, I'm actually a polymer chemist by background. I'm working in the um, engineering sciences department. And this work was carried out in collaboration with Sandra Wilkinson, Biological Sciences, and Professor Mandy Bader in Health Sciences. And um, Sandra did the testing of these polymers that I'm going to describe. So the aim of this uh, pump priming project was to make um, a new type of polymer and polymer is just a fancy word for plastic, um, for making urinary catheters that can prevent bacteria growing on them. Now, we've heard a lot today about the problems of uh, bacterial growth on catheters. And the idea here was to make a polymer that would be effective against bacterial biofilm growth. It would also have to be suitable for making catheters out of, which means it's got to be tough, flexible, water-resistant, um, it obviously has to be harmless to some very sensitive um, human tissue, it must not cause any irritation or damage. And of course, above all, as always, it has to be low cost, um, because catheters are, are used in enormous amounts and uh, cost a great deal every year, especially if they're one time use disposable. So that is uh, quite a shopping list, and you would say if it was easy, somebody would have done it already. When we talk about antibacterial surfaces, there are two types of mechanism here. There's what you might call an anti-biofouling effect, whereby the surface actually, in some way, repels bacteria. It stops them settling on it, they think, I don't like to look at this, I'll move on. This is very difficult to achieve. People looking at various natural um, surfaces from other organisms that can sometimes prevent bacteria attaching. The other way is to have a bactericidal surface that kills something that lands on it. And this is in fact the way we went in, in this, uh, this project. So the easiest way to make a bacterial surface is to add something toxic to the plastic that will kill bacteria. And silver, we've heard mentioned already today, people using nano silver treatments on things like catheters textiles, wound dressings, because silver is released from the polymer and it kills bacteria. Uh, quartz, quaternary ammonium compounds are another type of uh, toxic uh, compound that kills bacteria, and especially known as, as biocides, um, disinfectants, things like savlon, cream has a quaternary ammonium compound in it. The trouble with adding anything toxic to your polymer is it, it can wash out, it, it comes into the body, and it could be harmful to the user. So we're aiming for nothing being released in the polymer. So the question then is, can the polymer itself be made to kill bacteria? So we're looking at specifically at QPEI, which stands for cross-linked quaternized polyethylene imine, which is quite an mouthful, so it would be QPEI. That's been claimed as an antibacterial material used in dental fillings, among other things. And it's said that the attraction between the cationic uh, polymer and the bacterial cell wall leads to the disruption of the cell membrane and death of the cell. So this is polyethylene amine. It's a linear water-soluble polyamine. And if you cross-link it, you tie those together with uh, some other molecules. You stop it dissolving in water. You get a solid polymer that you can then carry out reactions such as quaternization to give you charged nitrogen groups down the length of the polymer. The challenge number one is actually making the polymer. I followed a published literature paper for making these materials and um, basically it didn't work. And for various reasons it couldn't work. There were two or three major flaws in it. The first one is the, the first step says Heat polyethylene amine with ethylene bromide for one hour at 60 degrees centigrade. When you get your ethyl bromide out of the group, you see the volume point is 38 degrees C, so that could never work. So we had to find a new way of making the polymers, which we did. We made um, flexible rubbery polymer, which is quite suitable for the purpose. 
Now, testing is another challenge. Um, I've seen papers where so-called uh, antibacterial polymers are tested like this in a petri dish. And if you see a zone of inhibition around, around your sample where the bacteria can't grow, so it's an indication that something's coming out of it. So if somebody's claiming that for a bacteriocidal polymer, you want to be careful. So we rigorously washed ours. Um, I'm not going to talk about the testing in detail. Sandra did this, and I just cut together two pictures. This top half here is the uh, clean polymer, and down below is the polymer leaf covered out for 24 hours. So a lot of questions there. The one that interests me particularly is why does this surface look so almost identical to the other catheter materials that you were shown earlier on? Does that roughness matter? <coughs> Another complication is bacteria never actually encounter a pure polymer surface. As soon as it comes into the body, it will have proteins, carbohydrates, all sorts of things sitting on it before the bacteria get around to sterilizing. And this probably happens within seconds. And it can blanket the surface, so the bacteria never get to see those charged uh, nitrogen groups, which might uh, kill them. And can this effect ever actually be effective? If, if the polymer does kill bacteria that settle on it, especially if there's some degree of electrostatic attraction, they're just going to sit there. You're going to get a layer of dead polymer on the surface, and maybe that will be a good basis for uh, further, further bacteria to settle on. So in summary, we did manage to make a polymer that seems to have suitable mechanical properties. Um, we tested it carefully, cleaning it beforehand, and didn't see any particularly good result. Um, it's possible to make further variations of this polymer. Now we have a different cotonization reagent, for example. So we're going to bring a few changes on this and see if we can improve the result. And hopefully with a bit more um, work, we'll find out whether this, can, this approach can be made to function satisfactorily.